McDonald. Here. Joe Zach. Here. Larry Porter. Here. Rick Dreher. Here. Folks, we only have one item on the agenda as published, um, and this is a result of uh, my polling everybody that I could get a hold of the other day to see if that's if last time's meeting really what we wanted to do, and that was we voted to move this ahead. Uh, this uh, uh, Burns and McDonald report uh, that was given to us and presented. Two or three people, all, the phone almost rang off the wall, and then I had to get back to people about, wait a minute, are we sure we want to do that? So what you have in, in front of you is what I prepared and sent to the council members. Um, and it basically says yesterday's meeting uh, ran long, and the data presented as far-reaching effects on the city and its citizens. In addition, the board shall have many un still has many unanswered questions regarding the rates as they were presented by Burns and McDonald's representative. A uh, majority of the board requested the following. One, the classes reflect the 6% overall reduction as requested. Number two, the classes as presented be compared and reduced to four classes. And number three, the rates to be, be tabled and uh, rescinded yes, and that we rescind yesterday's vote until these issues are resolved. So that's what we're here about today, uh, except for one item, and that is uh, somebody raised the issue that we can't vote over the phone. It has to be uh, here and present. So. That's why we're having today's meeting to see if this is what you want to do and to clear up the uh, uh, telephone vote. Was this already sent? Pardon me? Was this sent? Yeah, it went to the council that day. I agree. This is not legal. You cannot have a, especially when you didn't get a hold of everybody, you cannot, you, this has to be a public vote right. where everybody hears it. Right. And to, to call individuals and not have a discussion is not a public. Okay. And it's I think my this, error. I this, think needs to, this needs to be rescinded. Okay. It's my error. And that's why we're here today to pull it back up. So, any other responses or questions? Yeah. I, okay. The, the vote that we had was, I don't know if it got the minutes, but the vote that we had was on collapsing to four rather than 12. It wasn't to support the rate committee. It was, it was unfortunately, that was the way the motion was made, was to, to not, to go with four or go with 12, and we voted down the four. I don't know why this is coming back up to go to the four. I don't know where this concept of going to four ever came up. It was never talked about in the committee. Why you brought it up, I don't know where the concept came from. When we asked about if we went to four, what would be the impact, we were told that it would increase the residential rate substantially. And so we voted against that. Now, why we're bringing it back up, I don't understand. And we already voted it down once. Okay, the four came from the executive summary of the uh, rate design report of uh, May 29 of 2015. Which was voted down. It was we, never approved. It was voted down then? Yes. Okay. So I don't know where it was brought back up. By you. But it hasn't been brought up by this, this board. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't heard anybody suggests that we ought to be going down to four, especially when it's going to increase the residential rates. Okay. Can't hear me. Okay. Jack? It would seem to me to be appropriate that if we were going to enter into discussing these aspects, that we put the rescinding the motion up for a vote. Mm -hmm. 
There would not be a discussion on anything past if it failed. There would be if it passed. I'd entertain a motion if that's what you want to do. Well, since I wasn't here to vote on that, I'm going to decline on making the motion. I'll be happy to make the motion okay. that we uh, rescind one, two, and three on this letter and that we um, begin to look at this process differently. So I second. I second. We have a second? Yes. Discussion? Okay. Further discussion. Uh, hearing no discussion, it. then. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. I don't believe that that was ever an actual motion that was voted on in the last meeting. Right? Just asking. I don't know. I thought it was this on the, this document. Yeah, the motion that was made at the last meeting was by Larry Porter. It says, I make a motion to accept the 12 consolidated rate classes in the rate study report. And then it was seconded and all voted in favor. All right. So it was passed. The 12 was. 12, yeah. Yeah, okay. But I don't believe that the letter that you passed out was ever an actual motion to rescind, right? I think what we're doing, apparently this was sent to the city council mm -hmm. by the chair. What we were doing is saying we're rescinding this action that the, that the chair took. We want okay. the city council to know that we have rescinded this letter. Okay, so you're rescinding the letter, not a motion that was made. Okay, thanks. That's your motion. Rescinding this one? Yes. Okay. Then, as I understand it, and we'll have further discussion if you care to, it's the vote is on rescinding this letter that uh, we, you have before you. Okay, any further discussion? Well, he, his motion eliminated one and two, not three. All three. All three? Yes. Okay. Okay. Further discussion? No. Then all in favor of rescinding this letter? Vote aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. There we go. Next issue? May I see you show those hands again, please? Didn't quite get it. It was unanimous. Okay. I'm just abstaining. Okay. Thank you. The reason I made the motion uh, for the accepting the 12 is because I want to get started, and apparently it did get started in August, which I'm tickled to death to see that we have. I have made a step forward. We had council members and the mayor step up and say this is what we need to do and get it done for the public. And now if there's any fine tuning that needs to be done later on, we can do that. That was my motion and that's what we approved and that's what I'll stick with. Okay, do you want to make that motion now again? Do you want to have it read? I don't have, do I have to make that Would you motion? read that and we'll vote again? The motion from the last meeting you mean? Or it's already done? It's already okay, done. fine. Man. We'll just go back to that. Okay. All right. Um, any other issues? Yes, I, I do. Um, I think it's time that um, we take a step back as a board with regards to this rate study. It was clear and it was very enlightening at the electric rate special committee meeting that we attended uh, recently that um, this process for the rate study is just that. It's just the beginning. And there's going to be a lot more that needs to come into it. I, I truly believe um, that we're going to start looking at um, data versus just what we feel that we believe the meaning. And hopefully we're going to be looking at unedited data. And I, um, whatever that rate comes out, that's fine. But um, I, d I just wanted to make sure that everybody's on the same page, that everybody sees what's going on. But um, I thought it was very refreshing that um, the two council uh, folks and, and the mayor that was at the meeting are actually looking at the data and questioning some of the same things that we've questioned on this board. And I think that's a major step in, in the right direction. Uh, but I think it's still premature to 
um, decide whether 12 uh, classes is the, the right number or whatever rate is the right rate, um, how we're going to get the 6% out to, across the board is a big definition that somebody's going to have to come up with. But I think it's a commitment we've made to the ratepayers. So it's going to be difficult to uh, perform, but I still believe that it's way, way too uh, premature to make a decision. But I do think that um, steps are being taken to review the operations at um, IPL. And I also think um, we're seeing things in the best interest of the citizens. And I cannot tell you how much I applaud the efforts of that committee last, uh, was it last week? Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. This week. Tuesday. This week. Tuesday. It was fun though. <laughs> <laughs> or, or this Tuesday, but it was, it was very enlightening and I truly appreciate it. Well, I want to second that. Uh, the, that was a, a, one of the best meetings that I've seen in a long time. Uh, thanks to Mark and uh, and others, um, and the uh, the mayor was right on and, and very engaged, as well as uh, uh, Council and uh, Huff and and Van Camp. At any rate, they did a good job, and and uh, it, this is tough stuff. And they were really wrestling with it. I was impressed with their work. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the meeting, so. But I've, I've heard reports on it. It, it. it seems to me that what we're, what is desired is that we're able to uh, report back to the citizens, uh, the customers, that their, their bill was reduced by 6%, which, you know, that's, that's basically what's happening. But the problem, as I see it, is the bill is based upon kilowatts per hour, the, the energy charge, which that ought to be reduced by 6%. But the bill also includes the pilot. It also includes sales tax. And there might be something, some other things in there. So if you're talking about the bill and it includes the pilot and the sales tax, and you say all of that should be reduced by 6%, then that means that you're you're reducing the pilot by six percent. You're reducing the sales tax by six percent. You can't do that automatically. I think what could be done is you say we we're going to reduce the charge on the kilowatt per hour, which is which the energy charge, by six percent, and then we're going to tack on the pilot and the sales tax, and if there's any other fees, I don't know what else is in there, then you tack that on to to the kilowatt per hour. Now what we've what's been done in the past, as I understand it, is they have included the pilot in the energy charge, but they have excluded the sales tax. They've included sales tax as an add-on. Now I don't know why that's been done. I think the pilot ought to be separated out and added on to at the very end of the bill and as is the sales tax right now. That way, you could make the kind of statement that you want to make, that your energy charge has been reduced by 6%. And that can be calculated. But when you start trying to, inc to include the pilot and the sales tax in the 6% reduction, man, it, I tried to, you know, I sent to a couple of people, just, I couldn't figure it out. I think it's so complicated that and, and I'm not sure it's even legal to say that we're recommending to, to reduce the pilot by 6%. I mean, the pilot is established by a whole other city council action, or maybe it's an inserted charge. I don't know where, where the pilot is, has been authorized, I suppose, by city council action many years ago. So for us to say, well, we want, we're recommending you're going to reduce the pilot by 6%, I think that really complicates things and, and maybe makes it even illegal. Have, well, we seen what just, the, have we seen what the actual ordinance says when they did the approval for the 6% reduction? Does it say that it's illegal to reduce? And I'm not challenging it at all, Garland, but you've brought it up twice now, what's legal and what's not, and you haven't substantiated what is your baseline or where you're getting that information that's illegal. And I, that's all I'm asking to skip it. Just clarifying, uh, the 
what we're calling the pilot is a gross receipts tax. It's a tax on gross receipts. So when you reduce gross receipts, you reduce the amount that's paid to the general fund. So it is decreased because it is a tax on gross receipts. So what we're doing is we reduced gross receipts by 6% by cutting that out of the rates. So we reduced our revenue by that much. So it'll have a, it has an effect on taxes that apply to gross receipts. But, then so, if, but what we're wanting to do is, rather than have the gross receipts tax included in the rate, which is the way it has been for all these years, we're breaking it out because there's so much difficulty in comparing apples to apples in this whole Confusion gets involved, which you pointed out correctly, that a lot of people will compare these incorrectly because that's in the rate itself. So we're taking that out in future. There, it's going to be have the rates will be shown uh, uh, rate times the kilowatt. Uh, I mean, the rate times kilowatt hours used, and then there'll be a gross receipts tax applied to it, I and it'll be broken out separately. I personally have no problem with separating them out, but when you do the comparison, it's what you pay at the end of the day is the bill. It's not uh, my rate is this, it's what my bill is. And what our competitors are going to see is whether it's commercial or whether it's um, residential, they're going to see what the end, the end bill is. So you can act like the, the pilot doesn't make a difference. The pilot is in the, in the rate. If you separate it out and you calculate um, the bill after you make the the reduction or the sales tax, I have no problem with that. But the, when you get down to comparing one um, utility versus another utility, pilot is a part of that bill. Sure. Regard, you can't. Sure. You're trying yeah. to subtract it, and you can't. You know, the one no, thing I, though about that is, is though you have to be aware. You don't want to. Uh, it's kind of two different things. One is where how do we compare rate wise, and then the other one is how do you compare bill wise. And it is two I'm different per, subjects. I'm in favor of bill wise. Yeah. Just like what we get with the but with the chart since, that shows from the, the US Energy Department. Well, since the gross receipts tax is is a council decision that's totally separate than from the rate structure, we're that's kind of a separate thing. I don't think you're suggesting to lower rates below where they should be to counteract a to try to make difference on a gross receipts tax because some people may have 11%, some may have a 5%, some may have 9, 8, 10. There's, there's a large range of gross receipts taxes out there. But what we're talking about is trying to get our rates. When you're comparing, you know, to get when we're the comparing lowest rates. A, a car dealership that's paying the highest in the country on their electric rate or bill, excuse me, I shouldn't have said rate, I apologize. Or we've got the grocery stores that have the highest utility bill in the country. That's the bill. Part we have to take into consideration, and the city council also has to realize that that nine percent is also adversely affecting our ability to attract more business. That's all I'm saying. Does that make sense to you? Oh yeah, it's just I'm saying it's two different discussions. Is all I'm saying because you could throw into the mix. You could say, well, of course, the city has no personal property tax, which is, makes us very unusual that the city does not have a city personal property tax. So if you want to start talking about people's tax burden, that's a different discussion than the electric rates. And all, we're try all I'm trying to say is, let's talk about what the electric rates are. And then if you want to do like a comparison of total bill, including taxes and whatnot, that's a, another discussion. But I think we, as far as the, this group's concern is primarily what is the electric rate? That we're trying to do and all we were trying to say was electric that we're going to have a rate that is we'd like to have the lowest electric rate and then if taxes are applied to it that's another that's another discussion i'm done thank you that was our goal so you know and i think that's a great achievement if you can get there now if it falls short of what the desire is to have the lowest bill in all respects that's another goal that would be great but that's not really something that we can do with the rate design. That's that's another political decision about tax rate. Yeah, I think, I think keeping the focus on the bill is very important. In that, somebody walking down the street, if you'd talk to them and say, what is your rate or what did you pay last month? They'd have a lot clearer picture about what they paid because they wrote that check or whatever than the rate. They, they, 
most people, I bet 100% of the people, nearly, would not know what a raid is or how it's how it comes to pass. But they do know about their bill. Yeah, and it'll be helpful when we have the bills now show what it is on your raid, and then a tax applied to the end that'll make it more sensible, more make more sense to people. I think it is helpful. I got our bill yesterday, and it is helpful to have that uh, billing statement on there. Thanks for that. Well, I was just going to say that now that we understand that there is a really a significant difference between the independence pilot and the GMO pilot in Booth Springs and Green Valley, which IPL can't control that. You know, we could have a very good rate, but our total bill could be higher because our pilot is so much higher. When when Blue Valley when when Blue Springs and Green Valley have a five percent pilot, and we have a nine percent pilot, that affects the bill. We've been focusing on getting our our kilowatt per hour rate down, which is what is appropriate because that's what we should be doing. But but the bill is 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 impacted by the pilot. And that's a significant impact when you talk about 4%, because they take that 4% that four percent differential against the kilowatt per hours and the rate. And so we could be, we could be, have a lower rate and have a, a higher bill just because of the pilot. And that's something that I don't know how we ever explain that to people when, see, when people say, well, my bill is higher than somebody else, it may be higher because of the pilot. It's not because of the kilowatt per hour. Right now, if you look at um, the report that Lowell put, produced, 4% is not gonna make the difference. So there's a heck of a lot of room that we can make a change on rate before the 4% pi the pilot is gonna become an issue. Well, the, will the 6% make a difference? It'll get lower. You don't make right. a difference. Will it actually make a difference though? Yeah, when it is. It's, well, it's it, historic. It's the first time ever that our council has actually taken action to reduce rates. I'm not, I'm not, that's what's historic. Yeah, I'm not. I'm and not they're willing to against. look at it again. And that's all I ask. Look at it. Look at the data. Take it where you want to go. And it's going to be better than we've ever had in the past. Yeah. And that's all we can ask. Will it be the full amount that makes us totally um, equal to GMO? At least we're not out there publicizing that we have the lowest rates um, in, in the Kansas City area when we, in fact, don't because yeah. GMO, I mean, because our pilot is built into it. I appreciate the effort, and I will support that effort that um, the council is trying to look at it. In the past, they would have never looked at it. And, and I mean that quite frankly. It would have been whatever the rate came from the engineers at Burns and Mac, and Burns and Mac would have gotten their input from uh, IPL. IPL would have said, this is how much it's gonna cost us to operate, so this is what the rate's gotta be. What the uh, mayor and their committee is saying is, this is just like any other um, department in the city. This is gonna be your budget, now make it fit. That is historic for our city. It's historic on any um, objective data that we've looked, whether it's, um, um, the top 100 paid employees, whether it's the uh, report that we got from the U.S. Energy Department, those are real data. It's not make-believe. It's not uh, edited. And I think the worst thing that we can do for our citizens is to present edited reports. So I do applaud uh, the efforts that's going, and I truly support it. And I think it's going to get us in a much closer position to being competitive than we've ever been in the past. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you, Mark, at all. I, I, I am cautious about the proposed statement, not, not made by this board, but that we are going to publicize that, that we are the lowest rate in the region. I'm not sure we can make that statement. I think we have to be very cautious of that. Well, we feel like we can, if we can make that statement, we will. That's all we're saying. And, you know, our goal is to get to be able to make that statement. I think that's a goal that you all should endorse. And I mean, that, that would give us a good target to be going for. You know, when you when you start talking about rate reduction, you should have a goal in mind. 
And I think you can always go lower, but how, what is your goal? What are you trying to do? What we're trying to achieve with this budget and this rate reduction is to get the lowest rates, rates in the metro area for residential. Now, maybe you consider that less than perfection, and maybe it is, but when you achieve something good, you ought to value it a little bit. You ought to celebrate some victories, and that's all we're trying to do when we make that statement. And if we can, we like to be able to make the same statement for manufacturing. Now, the tax is another issue, but, I mean, it is a, it's a true statement about the rates, and that's what we're trying to do with this rate study. We said, like, well, what do we want to set these rates to be? And if you're saying that we should have set the rates to try to be, to take, to reduce it, to somebody's uh, gross receipts tax, whose gross receipts tax are you going to pick? You're going to pick the lowest one. But again, that's out of our out of the hands of this rate study. So I just feel like if we have this, we should celebrate a victory when we achieve something that's that's important. Because as you said, the six percent is historic, and it achieves something grand. And um, I, I just don't know why we are why we want to back off from declaring it if it's true. But Mark, it, it, in this statement here, it says residential rates on bills will be the lowest in the region. That's what I'm arguing against. We might be able to make the statement we have the lowest rates in the region. But I'm very cautious in saying we have the lowest bills. I agree with you. I agree with you. We've got to be careful on what we say. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. We should just be very accurate in what we say, and we need to clarify that we're talking the rate. So I'm with you. Jack, um, first of all, I support reduction in rates if we can. But I want it to make sense. I want this board, which we are endeavoring to do today, and probably will continue to do so. But I'm, I'm hearing, personally, I'm hearing that here's the rate, here's the target, and then now we've got to write the equation. The power and light department has to be able to function how do we know that for a fact? Do you, how are, are you quite confident that changes can be made within the department to support this effort? We made the cuts to make the 6% possible. You made the what? The reductions in expenditures equal to the 6%. It was like 8.1 million, I believe, in expend, annual expenditure reduction. Okay, I, you can't put capital improvements off forever. And we're talking about this rate more or less being forever. And this, and again, now see the finance, and I, I've said this several times, you know, the finance is another leg of the stool, which we really need to talk about as we go forward. And uh, so I'm, I'm with you 100%. I'd love we to have that need conversation. don't any oops down the road. So. Yeah, I'd love to have that conversation with, with you all about that. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, two quick questions. One is, are we on target? Scratch that. Are we on target with regard to closing the plant? Yes. And are we, uh, is there a, uh, when will we get a report about the um, exempt employees and the overtime? Well, there's, uh, as I tried to mention last time we've got a internal audit going on uh i don't know if our yeah our, our management analyst is here as a matter of fact and so uh he is I guess i, I really don't uh want to steal his thunder but i guess the uh he's being asked to do an internal audit uh tomorrow i guess would be the official uh on that and so um this is part of his uh list of things to look into so uh, I think I would just probably defer any more comment until after he gets done with all of his his work. But that's one of the things that is that was already being looked at. And uh, there's a couple of different parts to the the question uh, overtime and versus on call. So anyway, there's some people are talking about one versus the other. So there's there's more to it than I think people uh, realize right off first the first. Uh, blush, but that's one of the things we're going to be studying. So the excess and overtime report will be part of his tomorrow? Is that what I heard? No. Are you talking about just a report of how much overtime? Because we did provide that. You, you provided that, but we asked you for the ex exempt employees. Last yeah, and it was, it was in that report. Have that for our next, it was in, the, yeah, it was in that report. 
It was in that report. I by, it had the. It had the I can't tell the exempt yeah. employees in there. It has exempt next to the certain employees. Yeah. Okay, so you'd like to have more of a report? Uh, okay. Anything else? The plant and the. One thing we want to quickly throw out really fast, this idea about, I mean, we can take a look at uh, if you are, if, if there's a real interest in doing fewer rates. The one thing that the 12 was what our consultant thought was a, a, a reasonable number. But one of the things that we wanted to point out that I don't think we've done a great job of communicating is that the current rate is, uh, structure is 22 rate classes, right? But there's a bunch of permutations within each of those classes. So the simplification is more than just 22 to 12. It's a lot more. For example, the residential class, it has 10 permutations depending on usage with those declining block rates. So you eliminate all that, we've gone to two. So, you, you, so it just goes in each of the 22 classes, there were a lot more permutations, which we are eliminating. So it's more than 22 to 12. It's really quite a, quite a bit more simplification than that. So. Um, We'll, you know, we'll, we'll be uh, happy to go over this more, take a look at it, see if there's additional consolidation that's possible without messing it up. But uh, I just wanted to make that point that we hear you about the need to do it, make it as simple as possible. So, so the, the only um, thing on record from, from us right now is the motion that was passed last time to support going to the 12 classes. That's that's the only thing on record right now. I don't know if there's anything else that we want to be on record about, uh, but I think we need to know that that's, that's where we stand at the moment, is that one motion. Um, I, you, Mark, you indicated that this is a process. I don't know what, what that means. You know, is, is the board going to be part of that process? Or, you know, I don't know where, I don't know what the process is to move forward with implementing something. It was unfortunate that, I guess you can hear me, uh, it was unfortunate you weren't able to make it to right. the meeting the other day. But it, it was very clear that um, the committee is not taking the rate study cases by face value. They're investigating it much deeper into what is the potential for uh, savings at IPL, uh, what the potential is uh, with the new um, economic development that has been approved in industrial park. Those kind of things are going to take into it. There's really no rush for us to implement. Now, especially after I see you got the 6% on the bills, and I appreciate seeing that. Um, I don't know that there is a, a real rush to get the uh, rate case implemented as soon as possible. Um, I believe the process is that um, the rate committee will do their review and then get it to IPL and then the IPL will present it to us again for us to go over and either to endorse it or not to endorse it and then go to the city council for their um, approval. That's just my, my thought of what I think the process is gonna be and I think um, we need to give them a chance to look at it and not speculate. We do a lot of speculating here. And, uh, and, and in some cases, because of some of the data we've received in the past, um, speculation was the only thing that we had because we didn't get the real data. But I, I think this is a, a step in the right direction and that's where we stand right now. That makes sense? No. So basically, we're, kind of, we're not gonna be doing anything on this. We're waiting for the committee and all the another part of the process that will come back to us. Is, is that kind of what that's you're saying? That's how I see it. Okay, I just want to understand what our what our role was. Did you see it any differently? No. I want to go back to overtime. Are you the analyst or the? Yeah, Mark Tomaberry. All right, Mark. Uh, Mark, you got to use the microphone there if you're going to answer your question. You, you don't have to answer, just listen. Uh, a neighbor of mine knows somebody at the Power and Light works at the plant. Was bragging that they get two hours overtime every day. They haven't worked 
hour of overtime. And they're proud of it. So when you find that person, I'd appreciate knowing. That's all I know. Yeah, they were probably talking about on call pay. That's what I was saying. There's sort of a there's a anyway, not not to get into it too much now. No. But that's what I was saying when there's a little bit of difference between on call pay and overtime pay, and that's we're we're aware of it and that's what we're gonna have to look into. Would you consider that abuse? It, well, it just depends on what the circumstances is. Uh, sometimes on-call pay is a good idea. You know, on-call pay is what guarantees that someone will answer the phone. Mm -hmm. If you don't have on-call, I mean, I think you probably have this maybe in your industries, but uh, if you have, if you don't pay people to be on-call, they don't necessarily respond when they're called in because they may have already gone out and had to, a party or something and they're not in a condition to come in or something like that or they may have gone to the lake so you a lot of times you pay people to be on call oh, so well, I, I was rate, on call right and i answered so many sundays and saturdays and i went right if i'm on call i'm not going to go out and get drunk that's, that's what i'm saying if you're on that's call part of my job ask that man right. he was my boss so I'm just saying there's a difference between overtime paid when someone actually comes in and then there's on-call pay. So what we have to do is there's different issues here and we just spread separate them out and that's going to be part of what we're talking about. That's so everything. there's no easy answer to that right this second. So if you say, okay. is on-call good? He'll, he'll have he'll have it all for me. I know he will. Yep. Well, he we're looking like a good man. We're looking into it all and we're going to have some policy changes based on this review. That's all I can really say right now. And I just don't want to jump out ahead with it. Okay. Okay, anything else? Jack. I'm making a motion. Jack. <laughs> two, two points. First one, I just want to tag on to Larry's comments there. Um, since I'm the senior guy, um, years ago, and actually it was, it was in the later 60s, um, the crews would go out to repair a transformer or a pole or whatever the emergency might be, but you could be guaranteed that they come in as you're coming to work at eight o'clock in the morning. So the crews were staying out as long as they could to capitalize on the situation. The director at the time, and I'm saying this because nobody here was working at that time, so I can't offend anybody. Um, the director at the time says that's gonna cease. That's not efficient. That's not economical. I'm going to have certain management people inspect the site, see what's needed, have the people called in and stay with them and then when the job's done we go home so that's kind of where that started and it was like uh, two hours a day was the standby fee so a little history to go along with that aspect of it back to the rate study seems as if i noticed in in looking over the presentation that um, the consultant recommended doing away with the tiered uh, kilowatt hour usage it's and then charging a flat rate for all the kilowatts it seems to me to be a negative to have to I mean that if we weren't reducing the rate then that customer would pay more for their energy and even though we are reducing the rate is it enough to overcome a flat rate rather than a tiered rate everybody understand and there's not a consultant here to answer that question. <laughs> but, but Jack, I think, as I understood it, that the, the different rate structure was that the more you used, you got a bigger discount. And so we were, we were encouraging over usage. And I didn't, I don't think that, that that's the right thing to do either. I. Th you know, I think we want to we want to encourage conservation as opposed to encourage usage, and so that's as I understand that's why they talked about going to the flat rate to to. That's right. Is that right? Yeah, and and that's again, and that kind of goes back to that other document that EIA kilowatt hour comparison. It's based on it can be skewed by the fact of usage. So if you have those declining blocks. The more you use, the cheaper it gets. So then if you take that total bill and divide by kilowatt hours, cost per kilowatt hour is less with the same rate. It depends on the amount of usage can affect that. That's why we don't really use that in our comparison on the with the 
the other utilities, but it's it's an interesting statistic. It's just that I'm just saying so it does affect the end result. Yeah, and so what we're and it doesn't affect it positive, right? So they're they're. But yeah, I mean that's the recommendations pretty much for the the reasons that Garland mentioned. I think is why he was suggesting to go away from those declining blocks and go with this flat rate. Which again, I philosophy on why it's there and why it's not there. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm right. just saying the customer will see different economics with the flat rate. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, sir. Second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thanks.